next part. Mm. But how can it have given you the message, said Captain Lil, when she'd been shaken out of her sleep and they had gathered with bulkhead in the captain's quarters with its flickering gas lamps and dark wood panelled halls? Is it because I'm wearing your hairpin, asked Echo, touching the gold and emerald wolf pin she always wore. Postal pirates use facial recognition. Lil frowned from where she sat behind her wide oak desk and drummed her fingers on a sky chart. Only sky pirates use them to communicate with each other. Echo does look a lot like you said Bulkhead. Them facial recognition valves ain't foolproof, you know? Anyway, that's by the by. Who are we going to send? Lil leapt to her feet and strode up and down the cabin. It has to be me. But what if something happens to... I'm the captain. I'll go. It could be a trap. Remember the time you were tricked by Madame Maja? You are nearly ended up drowning in quicksand, said Bulkhead. I got away though, didn't I? Only by the skin of your teeth. Bulkhead rubbed the back of his thick neck. Another reason that it should be me, the goat. Lil shook her head. What puzzles me is why the Seven Skies Alliance is meeting after all these years. What is old Gus up to? It's not him you want to watch out for. It's that Viper Voss, said Bulkhead darkly. I can look after myself, said Captain Lil. She stabbed a finger at the chart. Filigree Ridge is only a couple of hours flying time from here. You'll need to drop me there and collect me in the morning. But who is old Gus? And Viper Voss, Echo asked. And what is the Seven Skies Alliance? Lil jerked her head up as if she'd forgotten Echo and Horace were still there. Nothing to concern you two, she said. Why don't you both go out and swab the decks or something? Echo folded her up. Swab the decks. Why, would, why wouldn't her mother let her in on those secrets? Was she a black sky wolf or not? You never tell me anything, she snapped. Echo, this doesn't concern you because you think I'm more of a princess than a pirate. Of course not. Lil's voice softened. But pirates follow their captain. You need to trust me on this. Echo sniffed and looked up at Bulkhead's fine face, kind face, and Lil's unreadable one. Uncertainty squirmed inside her. Did Lil even want her here? Was Echo just a nuisance to her? She glanced at Lil's sword gleaming in her belt and tears threatened to build behind her eyes. What's wrong? asked Lil. You don't think I'm a real pirate, Echo forced her voice not to wobble. I don't even have a cutlass, she mumbled. Flora does, and she's younger than me. It's not fair. Flora earned, earned, earned hers, Echo, Lil said sternly. Then her frown relaxed. But you're right. It's about time you learned how to use a blade. I think we need to get you a cutlass of your own. Ha <laughs> ha! Chapter three. Later that morning, when the sun was up and the monkeys were screeching in the coconut groves, Echo followed Lil through the wobbly treetop walkways of Sleepy Pams until they came to a part of town she'd never explored before. Lil pushed the palm leaves aside to reveal a shop built of intertwining bamboo tubes. Captain, Custler, Captain Custard's Cutlass Emporium, Lil said, the finest sky pirate outfitter in the whole of the Eastern Isles. Echo gasped, wishing Horace could see it too. She followed Lil inside and blinked her eyes as she adjusted to the dim light. The walls were lined with shelves piled high with long, slim boxes. Yeah. <sighs> Nobody seemed to be in the shop, but Echo heard a metallic thrumming sound and voices that seemed to be coming from the back room. Lil marched straight up to the counter and rang the bell. A moment later, a tall, red-haired woman emerged. 
She pushed back her welding mask with calloused hands to reveal a face with broad freckled nose and shining green eyes. The woman grinned and thrust out a hand to shake Captain Lil. Well, if it isn't Indigo Lil. Good to see you, Conchita. Lil slapped the woman heartily on the back. I need a new smictar, smictar, smictar to add to the collective. I've been, oh, do you need a new Simic tar to add to the collection? I have a fine Bonville steel with a cherry wood grip, or perhaps you'd like something more traditional. Conchita ducked under the counter and emerged with a long box. She blew the dust off, making Lil blink, Echo sneeze, and Gilbert scuttled down the neck of Echo's shirts. This, the woman went on as she opened the box with a flourish, is an antique Simictar handcrafted by the goldsmiths of Pomegranate. She took out a curved sword so sharp it almost disappeared when she turned it in the light. Here, try it. She offered the hilt to Lil. Lil shook her head. I'm not here for a sword for myself today, she said, although Echo noticed she cast a long, longing glance at the blade. Lil licked her lips, although I suppose it wouldn't hurt just to try. Precisely, Conchita grinned, revealing one diamond stud inside her. Inside her. It's a teeth. You got a diamond stud on it. Lil gave the scimitar an experimental swish cutting the blade through the air. So light, she said admiringly, and only 90 doubloons, Lil nodded slowly. Thank you, but no, I'm here to buy a first sword for my daughter. Echo stood up a little straighter, her eyes fixed on the shining scimitar. Your daughter, oh, Conchita looked at Echo as if suddenly noticing a first sword. What an honor. Let's get you measured up then. I'm sure I have just the thing for you. Ha! We're going to find out more about that. Ha <laughs> Tomorrow. Okay, Baba. Good night. Sleep well. Sweet dreams. Catch. And this one. I want for me. Bye-bye. I love you.